Chapter 8 Growing Plants Key Points Reproduction from Seeds Reproduction from Spores Reproduction from Other Parts Plants from Far Away Mom, look at these young plants growing in this spot. I wonder how they grow. Meher, they have grown from the seeds which were sown in the soil of this spot. Like all living beings, plants also produce their own kind. This process is called reproduction. Plants reproduce by seeds, spores, or other body parts such as stem, roots, or leaves. Reproduction from seeds Reproduction from seeds takes place mostly in the flowering plants like mango, hibiscus, rice, and mustard. In these plants, flower is the reproductive organ. In due course, flowers develop into fruits with seeds. Number of seeds in a fruit vary from plant to plant. A seed has three parts, seed coat, cotyledon and embryo. The hard, outer covering of the seed is called the seed coat. The baby plant inside the seed is called embryo. It develops into a seedling when the conditions are favorable. The baby plant is protected and fed by the cotyledons, which are two leaves in the seed. These two leaves are protected by the seed coat. The number of cotyledons may vary from plant to plant. The seeds of corn and onion have one cotyledon while the seeds of rajma and peanuts have two cotyledons. Germination of seeds The development of a seed into a new plant is called germination. A seed germinates when it gets water, warmth of sunlight and air. A seedling grows into a big plant only when it keeps getting water and food from the soil and plenty of sunlight and air. The embryo first grows downwards as a tiny root to form the radical. In due course, it develops into the root system. Then, a tiny shoot grows upwards to form the plumule. This forms the shoot system. However, not all seeds germinate. Some seeds are used as food by people and animals. Some are destroyed by heat and rain. Some seeds are not mature and not ready for germination. Let's go an extra mile. When the soil is soggy, seeds cannot get oxygen. They rot and do not germinate. Dispersal of seeds if plants grow too close to each other, they do not get enough space, air, water, minerals and sunlight for their proper growth and some of them may even die. Therefore, the seeds need to be scattered far away from each other. The scattering of seeds over a wide area is called seed dispersal. Seeds are dispersed by wind, water, animals or by the explosion of fruit. They are called agents of dispersal. Dispersal by wind. Seeds of some plants are small and light. They can be carried by wind easily. Seeds of grasses and orchids are dry and weightless. Seeds of drumstick and cinchona have wing-like structures. Seeds of cotton, dandelion and madar have tufts of hair and are very light. Hiptage, maple and sycamore seeds have wings attached to them. These structures help in the dispersal of seeds by the wind. Dispersal by water Flowing water carries away fruits which fall in it. We may have seen coconuts floating in water in coastal areas. When a coconut reaches a suitable area, it germinates. Lotus and lilies have seeds in them which are light and float on water. This mode of dispersal takes place mostly in the plants that grow in or around the water bodies. Dispersal by explosion When the fruits of some plants get dry, they burst open and the seeds are flung around in the soil. Plants like balsam, castor, pea, ladies' finger, beans and gorse spread their seeds by explosion. Dispersal by animals Animals and birds also contribute to the dispersal of seeds. Fruits of some plants have hooks, spines or stiff hair which stick to the fur of animals passing by or the clothes of humans. For example, the fruit of cockleburr has spines. 
Animals and birds eat the fruits of some plants and pass their seeds along with the faces. Reproduction from spores Some plants like fern, fungi and moss do not have flowers. They do not produce seeds. They produce tiny spores. Each spore grows into a new plant. Reproduction from other parts Many plants reproduce from other body parts. Such type of reproduction is called vegetative propagation. Plants like sweet potato, dahlia, and asparagus reproduce through their roots. Potato, ginger and onion are underground stems in which food is stored. They have eyes on them. Each eye has bud and under suitable conditions, it grows into a new plant. New plants grow from the bulbs of onion when they are planted in the soil. The bryophyllum plant has buds on the edges of its leaves. When these leaves fall on the moist soil, they produce new plants. Some plants like rose, hibiscus and sugarcane have buds on them. When the stems of these plants are cut into pieces and put into the soil, new plants grow from them. Plants from far away Some of the plants that we see in our country have their origin in other countries. They are not native plants of our country. Tea, for example, has its origin in China where it was grown about 1,700 years ago. People of China grew it for its medicinal value. The Britishers brought it to India. In our country, it is grown in Darjeeling, northeastern regions, Ramputra Valley of Assam and some regions of South India. Tea plant grows well where the air is warm, Humidity is high and there is plenty of rainfall. Elder talk. We should plant a tree every month at a suitable place. We should also encourage our friends to do so. Let's go an extra mile. The seeds that begin a new life with one seed leaf are called monocote seeds. The seeds that begin a new life with two seed leaves are called dicot seeds. Grass grows from monocote seeds and beans. Grow from dicot seeds. Read and recall. The process of producing one's own kind is called reproduction. Flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. Plants reproduce from seeds, spores, or other body parts such as leaves, stem or roots. A seed has three parts, seed coat, cotyledons, and embryo. Favorable conditions are essential for the germination of seeds. Seeds can be dispersed by wind, water, animals or by explosion. Some plants that we see in our country have their origin in other countries.